Hello children, how are you all? Hope you all are sitting fine. And children, I like to thank each and everyone for writing your exam well. Very good. Well done children and keep going. And before we start with our new lesson today, let us first discuss what, what we have completed till now. Children, we have completed four chapters. Lesson 1, 2 and 3 was included for your PT, PT1 exam. Then lesson 4 we have done for our unit test exam. And lesson 5 and 6 we are going to do. And that will be your uh, syllabus for your half yearly. That is from lesson 1 to 6. We have, we have already completed four chapters and two more chapters are left. That is lesson 5 and lesson 6 is left with us. Okay. And we are going to do. And before we start the lesson, children, let us see what are the learning outcome of today's lesson. That is lesson number five. And the name of the lesson is Discovering India. And we are going to start with 5.1, Parts of India and its government. We are going to learn about our own country, India, and its government. Okay, so let us see what are there in our learning objective for today. The learning objectives are to learn about village, towns, and cities. Then we have to know the meaning of government and its level. That means what is the what is the meaning of government and how many levels of government are there. We are going to learn. Then we are going to learn about the different functions of the government. What are the different roles or different functions played by the government? This, these are our, our learning objective of this lesson. So let us start with our topic. Okay, children, please get ready with your textbook and the page number is page number 37. Before we start with the lesson, children, I would like to ask, have you ever sent a letter? Children, have you ever sent a letter to your relative or your friends, anyone? Whom did, whom did you send to? Whom you have sent to? What address did you write on the envelope? Or what, are the, what, uh, what was the address written to whom you have send the letter so address we are going to learn what is address and it is very very important that a letter should have proper address without proper address your letter will return back children and what are the necessary things should be there on the letter we are going to learn the let us start with it, children. So, page number 34, I remember. The letter that Meher sent had Mehnaj full address on it. That means you have to write the full address. Now, what does the full address contain? So, there should be the name of the person. Number one, the name, the most important thing is the name of the person. It should be there. The name of the house, that means the house number, whatever house number it is there. Then street, to which road or the street he or she belongs then village which village he becomes it's uh, it's a village or a city or a town as well as the state to which state he belongs we must be able to write all those things and the most important is that we have to write the pin code pin code is most important thing to deliver the letter in the correct destination okay children these are the things we have learned the importance of letters and what are the things should be written on the letter on the envelope we have learned we have learned that the, the name should be there the house number the street village town or city the, st uh, the state where he or she belongs and the most important thing is the pin number okay children now let us move to the next part village town and cities villages india has one of the highest number of villages in the world so india you should underline children india has one of the highest number that means it's that village in india there are many villages in india in the world okay it is the highest number of villages in the world they are governed by gram panchayat so who looks after the village? Gram Panchayat. More than half the Indian population live in village. And more than half of the Indian's population live in village. So we say that 70% of uh, Indians are farmers. Because 
they belong to villages where they grow crop children okay where the where they cultivate crop and do agriculture so we say that we also say that india is a land of agriculture why most of the people live in villages that is 70 percent of the people belong to village and so let us start compared to a city or a town a village is as follows so city or a town we, we are going to compare now with a village so village is smaller in size okay it is smaller in size has more open space and greenery so when you move to village you can see there are open space and greenery everywhere less polluted because they there is no traffic light in cities or in towns has no airport and children you will not find airport because airports are it's uh, located in cities okay and towns so what we have learned that village are smaller in size number one we have learned that villages are smaller in size then we have learned that it has more open spare space as compared to city and town and greenery you'll find greenery everywhere and less polluted also that means less pollution then has no airport you'll not find airport in village okay children this is what we have learned about villages now let us start with the towns okay children now let us start with towns towns are governed by municipal councils okay first we read that village are governed by gram panchayat okay then second we have learned that town is governed by are governed by municipal council they are bigger than villages but smaller than cities they are bigger than villages but smaller than cities town has more facilities such as hospitals and schools as compared to village so in village we will find less hospitals or less schools but in towns you'll find more hospitals and more schools and colleges however they are also more polluted than village one disadvantage is that children it is more polluted but in village it is less polluted okay children now moving to the next page we are going to learn about cities cities are governed by municipal corporation they are bigger than both towns and village now what we have learned that first we have learned that village are governed by gram panchayat then towns are governed by municipal council then we have learned that cities are governed by municipal corporations they are bigger than both town and village now city is much more bigger than town and villages cities also provide many facilities we have many facilities children isn't it we stay in a city guwahati so such as big hospitals you'll find big big hospitals then schools and colleges however city are more crowded than towns and village population is more in cities rather than towns and villages they are also much more polluted they are much more polluted that means there is more pollution in cities the village towns and cities together form states now how states are formed children we have learned village towns and cities together they form a state okay in a state there will be town also cities also and villages also that forms a state okay these are the things we have learned now moving to the next states and union territories of india india is the world's seventh largest country okay india is termed as the seventh largest country it is difficult to manage such a large country so it is not easy for the government to ma manage each and every look and corner therefore it has been divided into smaller areas called states and union ter territories so what is it is done children it is divided into small states small states and union territories india has 29 state but now it is 28 state the capital of india is new delhi the capital of india is new delhi 
Each state also has a capital. So a state is also having its capital. So such as Assam, we have the capital this pool. For example, Bhopal is the capital of Madhya Pradesh and Dispur is the capital of Assam. India also has the seven union territories. A union territory is an area that is directly governed by the central government. Like we have our state government who looks after us, but the union territory is directly governed by the central government. Okay, you should remember that union territories are those states that are governed by the central government okay they are under the central government directly under the central government but we we fall fall under the state government look at the map of india with the states and union territories rajasthan is india's largest state and goa is the smallest state the Andaman and Nicobar Island is India's largest union territory, with Lakshadweep is the smallest. So, Andaman and Nicobar Island, where it is, you know, children, Andaman and Nicobar Island falls in the Bay of Bengal, and Lakshadweep is in the Arabian Sea. So, Andaman and Nicobar Island is the largest union territory, and Lakshadweep is the smallest. Okay, children, these are the things we have learned today. Before I wind up my class, children, let us have a recall of what we have learned today. Okay, children, before I wind up my class, let us discuss what we have learned in our today's class. So, number one, we have learned about villages, towns, and cities. Now, what, what are villages, children? Villages are smaller than towns and cities in village you will find open space more open space and greenery less pollution will be there smaller in size but has no airport again town is uh, bigger than villages you will find school uh, college hospital also and there will be more pollution again moving to cities Cities are bigger than both villages and towns. You will find there uh, more hospitals, schools, colleges and so on. Shopping malls will be there. All the facilities will be available. But more population and more pollution will be there. It will be more thickly populated. That means more pollution, uh, people will be there and there will be more pollution also. Then coming to the next point, we have learned about the state and union territories. So states, how many states we have in our, in our country? We have 28 states and 9 union territories. Children, it has changed. Earlier it was 7, but now it is 9 because Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh is included as our union territory. So we have learned these things in our today's class. And in the next class, we are going to learn about the meaning of government and the level of government and the functions of the government. Okay, we are going to discuss in our next class the three important things, the meaning of government, the levels of government and the functions of government. Okay, children, I like to wind up my class here. Thank you and have a nice day ahead.